In this video, I'm going to show you the media item buttons in Reaper. So the project set up here with a bunch of items in the project on tracks. And if we look to the upper left corner of each item, we don't see any buttons there by default, which is typical or default in Reaper. But that'll change depending on the state of these items. For example, if I right click this item, go to item settings, and choose to mute the item, we then see a button on this item, letting us know this item is muted. But it doesn't just show us as a status of the item, it also performs a function. We could hit the button and it unmutes that item. So it's useful, and it also shows us the status of our items. But we could change how that shows up in our preferences. If we go to Options, and go down here to Preferences, we could scroll down to Appearance and Media. And right over here in this section is how the Media Item buttons are handled. Let's start in the upper left corner. By default, if our items are locked, we're going to see a button for that. So if I right click this item, go to item settings, and lock it, we can see that the item is locked. It's a bit grayed out. It also has a button showing us it's locked. And again, if you want to unlock this item, we don't have to do it in the right click menu. We can just hit it right here, and it unlocks this item. So again, it's useful, and it also shows us the status of the item if it's locked or not. But if you tend to lock your items quite often, you might want to choose this option. Not locked. If we choose this, we're always going to see a lock button on our items. So if we want to lock the kick, just hit it, and our kick item is locked. Do the same on the snare or the overheads. So it performs a function of locking our items. But we can still unlock it the same way. But by default, we're not going to see the lock button unless we choose it over here. And again, it's off by default. And the same thing with the mute button. By default, we're only going to see it if it's muted, but we could choose not muted if we want. So now, all our items have a mute button by default. So if we want to mute the kick, just do it right here, our snare, and so on and unmute them the same way. But again, by default, we're only going to see the mute button if it's muted. If you want to see it all the time, just leave this on, which is my personal preference. And it's the same thing for take effects. If we want to add an effect to our kick item, we can right click, go down here to take, and choose show effects chain for active take. And that opens up the effects browser. Let's add an EQ to this item right here. Now this EQ is on the kick item. And we see it right here with the effects button. We could open it at any point and see and adjust that plugin right from here. And we could also delete it, alt on the PC, option on the Mac, to delete that effect. And notice we don't see the effects button anymore. So we need to use a keyboard shortcut or right click to add an effect to the item. Or we can use this button, no effects. And now we see an effects button on our items. So if we want to add an effect to our snare, just hit the button. It opens up the effects browser and just add it if we want and adjust it from here. Or we'll delete that effect, but still see the effects button. But again, this option is off by default. So we only see the effects button if there's an effect on this item or take. And it's the same thing for our take envelopes. By default, we're only going to see them if we're using them. So if we right click, go to take, and choose one of our take envelopes, like volume, there's a volume envelope on this item, which we could adjust like this. And then we could see a button showing us that we're using it. But if we want to see that button all the time, 
just turn on no active envelopes and we'll always see that button. So we could click it and choose what envelopes we want. Volume, pan, mute, and pitch. Choose it. Now we have a volume envelope on this item. We'll delete it, but we still see that button unless we turn it off over here. Now we don't see that button. And again, it's off by default. And it works the same way for notes. If we right click this item, go to item settings, item notes, put a note for our kick, save it. Now we can see there's notes on this item. We can click it to open it back up or delete it by clearing those notes. And now we don't see that button. But if we want to, just turn on no notes. And then we'll always see a note button on our items. So we can click it, add notes if we want. And we see we have notes on this item. And also, we could add them over here. But again, this is off by default. So we only see that button. If we have notes on this item. And now we don't. Now, over here, we have the item properties. And we can see by default, there's no button on our items. Because by default, if we double click our items, it opens up the media item properties. But if you want that button all the time, just choose it right here. And we always have the media item button. On our items. So we just click it and it opens up the media item properties for that item. But again, it's off by default unless we have resampled media. Then over here, we have pooled MIDI, which is what happens when you have MIDI items that are exact copies of another. In other words, if you edit one, both are going to change. So they're pooled. And if you want to see if they're pooled or not, We'll see it with a button right here, which is on by default. Then we can see if our items are grouped. So if we select these items, type G, we see it's grouped, hit U, it's ungrouped, and there's no button to see. And then finally, but not least, we have a volume knob. By default, we can adjust the volume of our items with a volume handle. By putting our cursor right here, notice how the cursor changes. We can bring down the volume of our item or back up, but we could also do that with a button or a knob. Just turn it on right here, and we get a knob on each one of our items for our kick, for our snare, and so on. And we could also remove the handle right here. So we only get the knob. We adjust it on each one of our items, but we can't adjust it here. Notice the cursor doesn't change because I turned off the handle. Or you could have both. Still adjust the volume over here or over here. Or if you don't like the knob, just turn it off. And it is off by default. But my personal preference is to leave this on and leave this off. And then finally, we can adjust the height where we see our buttons. Let's make it so we can see buttons for all these. See all the buttons on our items. But now if we adjust the height of our tracks, if we make them too small, we don't see the buttons because it's too small. Make it bigger, and we do. And that height is decided right over here. It defaults to 49 pixels, but you could choose any value you want. So that's pretty much it. That's the media item buttons in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.
Ah!